Hi everyone, I'm Angela Fair. Recently on one of my YouTube live video lessons, which I do once a week on YouTube here, I had created this wet and wet wash on a piece of paper that I stretched over canvas stretcher bars on the back of an old painting, actually. And um, what really has me excited is, I, well, I like the stretcher bar technique because suddenly you have something that's very much like a painting on canvas. Once this is complete, I can varnish it to seal it. And then I like to wax it with Dorland's Wax Medium, which is a wa beeswax and resin compound that will pre preserve my painting in a beautiful and natural way. It still feels like it has the integrity of watercolor, which is something that makes me very happy. I really like this wash. I feel like it looks a lot like orchids to me. And I like the beautiful moments of color that are just um, shining through. So I wanna add some crisp details. This is the second stage of the painting. If you want to see the first stage, uh, it's in my YouTube lesson library, which you can subscribe to uh, using the link below the, the in the description for this video. Um, but today, I want to add some details to it uh, and really not lose any of the beauty of this painting. So I want to keep uh, some control and I don't want to go overboard in, in what I add to the painting, but I do feel like it needs a little bit of definition uh, to create the shapes of the flower that I saw emerging. And I'm not using a reference picture, uh, so it's kind of an intuitive flower and kind of imagined. And I've painted flowers for many years, so it's a little bit easier for me to do that. And I own orchids, I just think they're so beautiful, so I try to grow them in my home. And so the beautiful thing about watercolor is even though I'm adding more paint to my painting, I'm not losing what's underneath. Uh, and so with, and with watercolor, because it's transparent, you get that uh, opportunity to build up rich darks and layers of transparent color. So the colors I'm adding now will will the colors beneath them will still sh show through. And I want to paint right down over the side of my painting too uh, to keep my paper on the stretcher bars looking nice uh, and matching with what's happening on the front of the painting. So I've just painted with fairly juicy pigment onto dry paper. You see I have a nice crisp edge here and a nice crisp edge here, and that's giving me the suggestion of petals. But I don't like hard edges um, used to excess. I like a little bit of softness. So now I'm going in with a clean brush just to let some of that color flow back into the flower. And I'm gonna lose a bit of my edge but I think I will gain in terms of unifying my painting and having everything kind of um, fit together. And that's called a lost and found or a hide and seek edge where you have it kind of appear and disappear uh, on the painting. And if I feel like my color's flowing too much and some watercolor paints really push into a wet wash more than others, um, I can use a bit of paper towel just to lift and go back to lighten some of that color. I still get my soft edge, but I'm removing moisture so that color won't bleed uh, in an uncontrollable way. I'm only using three colors for this painting. I'm using Daniel Smith's Rose of Ultramarine, and I'm gonna paint just a pure line of it right here. I'm thinking about maybe some um, stripes on the petals or maybe this is some stamens it could be either one I think they're gonna be marks right on the petal and then I think uh, the deal with Rose of Ultramarine is it's both rose matter um, I'm spattering but I think that's too splattery so I'm gonna use my my toothbrush to put a little spatter of Rose of Ultramarine to create some freckles on my petals. And where they land on the wet paper, they're not going to bleed, you know, they're going to bleed and disappear. Rose of Ultramarine is made from ultramarine blue, and I believe Rose Matter. Um, I guess I could read it. Ultramarine blue and quinacridone red. So it says rose, but it's actually a quin red. 
And as Rosa Vulturemarine starts to dry, and especially if it's in a quite a wet wash, it will separate as it dries. And so you'll get this beautiful um, mixed pigment of both blue and uh, beautiful rose color, which creates some really fascinating effects. I'm going back to the Thalo turquoise. Uh, I guess I'm using four colors because I did, uh, I added cobalt blue to my mix, uh, to my combination here, and thalo turquoise. Um, because thalo turquoise is such a good friend to rose of ultramarine. And then the th third or fourth color that I'm using um, to make kind of a rough triad, um, a kind of a rose of ultramarine is kind of a red, uh, cobalt blue is a blue, and then I'm using Verona Gold Ochre, also from Daniel Smith, and it's this lovely, soft, um, buttery hue, gold, I guess. And the Verona Gold Ochre is a fairly new color, I believe, but if you don't have it, uh, raw sienna would also work. Yellow Ochre would work, although it's a little bit more opaque, so it will cover um, the transparent colors just a little bit more. And I kind of like that rough edge there. I'm not sure if I want to keep it or if I should soften it out though. Um, on this side, because I'm using mostly yellow, it's going to look like a lot like there's sunlight streaming in from this corner of the painting. And yes, I'm softening here so we get um, just a looseness to it. I don't want to outline my flower. And then we're going to go in and paint some more definition in the center. And the deal with flowers, is, uh, I love that flowers have those, you know, central stamens and uh, usually a, a defined center because that gives us uh, a focal point. Loving the rich paths of color over here. I'm going to add some Rose of Ultramarine in this area. Um, trying to decide where, what form my flower takes up in this upper part. And I think it's going to be one of those exotic orchids that has a lot of smaller petals. Rather than the simpler, uh, the Phalaenopsis ones that I grow in my home. So then I'm really kind of guessing, guess, uh, imagining, guessing doesn't sound right, imagining an or orchid variety. And there's so many hundreds or thousands of orchid varieties that I think I'll be able to get away with it. As a loose watercolor painter, I like to paint things that are like things. I don't feel like I have to be committed to um, photographic realism. I'm a loose painter, so I want to evoke a feeling. I want to paint a flower that's like an orchid. It doesn't have to be a perfect reproduction. In order for it to have give a feeling and evoke an emotion, uh, spattering again with my Escoda Versatil. This is the number 10 rigor that I use for 90% of my painting. And I like those little polka dots happening up in this corner. And you can still see the original wash, which was a com combination of all three of my colors. Uh, some of that gold really showing through there. Because I'm filming this, I can actually look through the viewfinder of my camera to evaluate my painting. And that can be really helpful. When you pull back to evaluate, you can see things that you don't see when you're just inches from your paper or your canvas. And uh, that can help you make decisions for the to improve the composition in your painting. Uh, I'm wanting to add some darks right here. Uh, I think that's going to aid in moving the viewer to where I want them to look in my painting. I'm going to use gravity to help me, tilting my board to let some of that color flow. Oh, and I kind of like that. I've got this um, 
With working loosely in watercolor, with having dry paper with lots of wet areas, because I've gradually added water as I've kept painting, I still have places on my paper that are mostly dry. And that means I get um, this give and take, the, the hard and soft edges happening both at the same time. That means I have to be continually changing my painting strategy depending on where I'm applying my brush. So if I'm putting my brush on a wet spot in my painting, I'm aware that it's going to flow more. And if I'm putting it in a drier area, then I'm going to be concentrating on line. And then there's so many just damp areas that um, have to be kind of babysat because when your paper is damp, and oh, that's kind of interesting actually. When your paper's damp, then your color wants to be a little bit blotchy. And you'll get this irregular edge. And you have to decide how much of that you want. Now, we don't have any green, but we have gold ochre and we have cobalt blue. And if I combine those two, and in fact the phthalo turquoise might mix even better with the gold ochre to make a green. Yeah, I get kind of a cloudy gray green. Keep stirring it around and see what I get. And because it's made from our original colors, we know it's going to be a match. It's going to look like it belongs in the painting. And that's color harmony. Um, using those repetitive, limited colors uh, to keep unity in the painting. And so I'm just creating some marks in the background that could be leaves, might be leaves, might be stems. You know, there might be one up here, because maybe there's another flower off in the distance. Maybe there's some green over on the edge here. Kind of balance things out. I don't like that line. Soften. And I think a little bit more. Because I started with such a beautiful first layer, I don't really want to fuss too much. I don't want to lose the freshness of what happened in that first wet and wet wash. So I've already probably added more detail than I really need. But I'm just going to add a little bit more <laughs> because I'm enjoying myself and I don't want to stop. And really, why would why do you paint except for to just have fun and enjoy it? And whether and if I mess this beautiful wash up, then uh, this this lovely painting on this uh, stretched can stretcher bars, I will peel it off, stretch a new piece of paper, and start over. And I'm sure at some point I will train myself not to overwork. And I was just working on a new online course for my website at learn.angelafair.com and that was one of the concepts I was talking about is this idea that if you're overworking a painting, it means you're experimenting, you're learning. Uh, how far can I go? And those are important questions to ask. Where do I stop? And we often, we just have to learn the hard way. Um, and that's going to be by overworking your painting a few times. So don't feel disheartened if that's your method. Uh, that's where you end up making your mistakes is in overworking. You will develop that internal uh, that internal break, breaking system that tells you it's time to stop, step away, come back with fresh eyes and evaluate how far you've come. And just adding a little more violet here, just because I can. Um, I really love line and adding some interesting lines into the painting uh, in this final stage I think is going to Again, move the eye right here where I want them to go. And maybe someone will see a bird. Someone else will see an angel. I have had that um, in, in a painting that I called my flying squid painting. So, 
You know, it's it's all in the eye of the beholder. And again, when you're suggesting things, it's like an orchid. It's like a bird. It's like a flower. Uh, you give people the opportunity to look into your painting and see what what has meaning to them. And I think that's a really neat part of the conversation between the artist and the viewer. I really am going to stop. Uh, I'm loving how adding those additional layers of colour makes the lighter areas, the places where I really haven't touched much with my brush, uh, makes them dance just a little bit more. A um, little bit more spatter. Just to make that match and move around the painting. Keeping it light. Thank you for watching with me as I videoed my process. If you want to see, again, the first layer of this painting, it's in my lesson library at learn.angelafair.com. The link is in the description for the video. And uh, I just encourage you, have fun with your painting. Uh, try out those what ifs. Let the watercolor flow and do its thing and then just kind of come along for the ride and you're going to have so much fun on your watercolor journey. I'm Angela Fair. Thanks for watching.